Hi, Ben here, and welcome back to the workshop for another Work in Progress Wednesday. So we're back in the workshop, catching up a little bit, because we were away last week in Cornwall, so we were having a little bit of time away from the workshop, getting up on the southwest coast path. So me and Lois did a little bit of walking, and we also did some swimming, and we also did some uh, canoeing as well, actually on the sea as well as on the lakes, which was really nice, but it's also nice to get sort of recharged and come back into the workshop and sort of pick up where we left off really. So lots of things on the bench, we've got carving tools, I made a load of carving tool handles before we went away, also got lots of blades made, so we're gonna be sort of polishing those up and getting them all glued in the handles this week. Also managed to glue up a few uh, woodlanders and things, so I had a good session of glue up yesterday. So I've got lots of woodlanders all glued up, we've got this really nice desert ironwood one that's about to get shaped. And rather than just me shape this and you not be able to enjoy the process, we just upgraded uh, a camera. We've just got a new sort of um, point of view camera that I've just got this head mount for it as well. So I may look a bit of a nerd, but basically I can put this on and take this into the grinding room and hopefully you'll be able to see me actually shape this knife from my perspective. So basically see exactly what I'm doing first sort of point of view really. So we're gonna hopefully do a few more videos like that with a camera either mounted on my head or we've also got a chest rig. So you'll be able to see what we're doing in the workshop and maybe just get a bit more of a feel as if you're actually me for the day. So it should be fun. We used to have a GoPro, but it sort of went a bit wrong. It started filming in purple for some reason. So this is a little upgrade. This is a little cross tour camera, not very expensive but we took one away with us when we went to Cornwall and it was working pretty well underwater. So let's see what it does when we're actually using it in a fairly dusty environment that is the workshop. So I'll put this camera on, I'll take this nice desert iron wood, woodlander into the grinding room and we'll start to shape this up and hopefully make it feel like a really nice, comfortable handle for a perfect bushcraft knife. Right, so I'm into my happy place. This is the grinding room. So this is where we keep all the dust all in one place. So first of all, I've got this 60 grit belt on this grinder. This is my Radius Master grinder, and I've got it in its vertical position. So I'll turn the extractor on. Might be a bit noisy, but I'll turn the extractor on. That'll turn on this big jet extractor with a cyclone. collect most of the dust down there so we'll start to clean up these sides to start with So we've rough ground that and we've pretty much got it all the way back but obviously the scratches are running 90 degrees and we want them all running that way in line with the blade and the tip. So what we'll do, the beauty of this grinder is I can flip this from vertical to horizontal really quite easily, change this belt as well. Change it over to a 120 grit. put these different rests on there so this is a nice little rest so that I can get all those contours cleaned up. What I also like to do as well is clean up this spine so with a junky knife you just take off that tape 
Right, we'll turn the extractor back on. Start to clean up that profile again. that's pretty good. So I'll take a picture of it at that stage, put it on the old Instagram later. This is all part of the knife making journey that you don't really understand that you have to do is not only you're making knives but you're promoting what you're doing as well. That's some amazing rain on here so it's kind of a pleasure really that I can be in here on my own but I've almost got hundreds of people following along the journey as well so that's looking pretty good so this is where the magic happens this is where we start to put the shape into the knife itself at the moment it's all square not very nice so now we're going to start putting that shape in It's already starting to feel more like a knife, but obviously we need to take those corners off. It's just square at the moment. So we'll start knocking those corners off next.
we'll take it over now to the uh, slack belt. So this is a scalloped edge belt. Just blend that a little bit. Okay, so we've finished on the grinder, pretty much taking it down pretty much all the way down to 400 grit on this particular scallop belt. So it's pretty smooth now, but it still needs some hand finishing. The more material you take off on the grinder, the better, and the more rounded it will become. But obviously the more, the more time you spend on the grinder, the more likelihood you can make a mistake. So obviously with a few years of experience, you can pretty much take it to the finished shape you need, and then we'll just clean up those scratches just with some hand sanding and we've even chamfered the little fong tube as well at that earlier stage as well so we'll come over to here handles everywhere look and then we'll pop this into the little knife vise and we'll find some sandpaper so this is for 400 grit so this should be plenty of fine enough on this just to blend these in a little bit I'm trying to make sure that all the scratches run with the grain of the wood that I'm working on. So obviously the grain's running from the tip of the knife to the back of the knife. And if you want to, if you find that you're working on soft timbers and these rivets start to grow, sort of protrude beyond the, the material that you're sanding, you can back it up with a piece of leather, something like this. And that works really good. back of the knife there so that it's comfortable you don't want any square edges digging in you when you're using the knife so you just use your hand just to see if there's any hot spots anywhere this is going to be amazing though with these dark dark colors in this ironwood Working through the grits, we're up to about 800 grit now, and uh, I think it was Ed Fowler, who's a famous knife maker. He says that basically knife making is the constant search for scratches. So I'm looking in here and seeing if I've left any scratches from the previous grit, and if I do, I'll go back and resand it and get those scratches out. But basically, it's uh, just scratch refinement at this stage you're just basically trying to just polish out the previous grit and make that wood really pop also like to take off those really hard edges I don't like leaving that sharp edge on the front of the scales so I'll round that slightly
this hard edge off this this pommel as well. Just take that the real sharp edge off. Still leave a lot of shape because that sort of hooked sort of bird's head gives you a lot of grip, but you don't want that sort of sharp corner digging into you. actually like to do and it might sound crazy but I actually like to get a little bit of WD-40 and clean the grain off a little bit now for one it gives me a little test run to see how amazing the grain is looking it also helps show up any of those scratches that we were talking about I'll even sand it when it's uh, and it's still wet with some uh, WD-40 as well. Seems to give an even better finish. So we'll just lightly hit this on the buffer now. So we finished shaping up that knife and that was the first bit of footage off the, the head cam. So hopefully you've enjoyed seeing my sort of knife maker's perspective of being in the grinding room and shaping up this beautiful bit of desert ironwood. I mean that's the, that's the thing, that's the, the reason why I love making knives so much is each piece of timber or each piece of handle material is always going to be a bit different, especially when you're using natural materials like wood or antler or bone things like that each one's always got different colors i mean this is a pretty exceptional bit with this lovely dark stripes in there and being desert ironwood it's very durable it's got all its own natural oils in it's pretty much perfect weatherproof handle material if you're going to go for a natural material and this is on some of our aebl stainless this is actually 3.5 mil thick so a slightly thicker blade but still still thin enough for finer work for spoon carving food prep things like that but no blade flex with that uh, 3.5 mil thick blade so really happy how that one's come out and lois has made a really nice coyote brown sheath for it this has got some really nice graining in there as well so this will fit in there nicely each one's wet molded to a woodlander so you get a really good solid fit in there so it's not going to fall out when you're out on the trail so yeah really really enjoyed actually filming that and hopefully you enjoyed seeing how that knife sort of came to life from that pretty ugly block of wood to start with into something that's going to make a really nice knife for somebody for their next adventure so what we're going to do is a bit of fun we're going to put this on the store now so this will actually be available for the, you guys that are watching the youtube video if you want the opportunity of actually getting this special desert ironwood woodlander then check out the link below and hopefully you'll manage to pick up this really nice knife so thanks for watching hope you enjoyed our new little head cam videos like i say we'll do a few more we'll probably do some of actual pole lathe turning so you'll get a different dynamic of the actual woodworking videos as well but hopefully we'll see you next week for another work in progress wednesday and thanks for watching